Hey everybody, how's it going? Christian with the ACSL lesson series here today, and what we're going to be going over are FSAs, finite state automations, and regular expressions. I've compiled a PowerPoint that should give a pretty comprehensive overview of the topic, and after that we'll go over a wide variety of different related questions on those topics. So first, FSA is a finite state automation. There are four different things that you'll notice about that there's the input alphabet transition rules unique start state and final state so the states are represented by these circular nodes the incoming state has an arrow pointing towards it so that's it's like incoming you're going to run an expression through an fsa and if it checks out it'll end up at one of these final states which is represented by a double circle now traveling along the arrows means that you must have the indicated value so a circular arrow at a stop means that you can have as many of the value as you want from zero to affinity, and this is symbolized by a star. And a split FSA shown over here means that either of the paths can be traversed to get to the final state, which again is that double circle, and that's gonna be symbolized by U. So for a little review of this, you know, you start here, there's no requirement to get to the first node. To get to the second one, you'll need to have an A in the expression. The B star is just means that there can be zero Bs, one B, or as many Bs as you want. It goes to infinity. And then there's another required C before you get to the end result. And then here, again, the union is, you can either go A, C to get to the final or B, C. You can represent this either over here by this union, you know, A, C, U, B, C. Or since both of them end with a C, it would also be appropriate to just say A union B and then C. So for some need to know symbols, again, we've covered most of this. The union is A or B. A star is A from zero to infinite or infinity times. And then the null string is the only thing that's new here. So a lambda symbol, I think that's what it is. That just means nothing is contained. So over here for a review, this would be a regular expression. And that would mean, you know, you need an A to start, then a B, then an any number of A's, so that could be zero or infinity, and then either an A or a B to close the string out. So for a basic problem, you know, find the simplified regular expression for the following FSA. You start here, you need a zero, then you go to this node, any number of ones is one star, then you have another zero and another one before you get to the end. Here we've got, given the following regular expression, which is one star, zero, one, and then parentheses, zero, one star. So that means zero, one repeated as many times as possible. And then it closes out with one, one, zero, zero star. So which of the following strings match that pattern? And A will simply not work because it requires two zeros to start. And this, you know, you can have zero ones in the beginning, but then you need a required zero and a required one. So that double zero won't work. B will match uh, if you remove all the asterisks or the stars. It simply reads, you know, one zero, one zero one, one one zero zero. So that's an easy way of determining that B works. So for C, you know, it's not going to match, um, and it's a little bit of a complicated explanation. But there's a requirement of at least three ones in a row, and this can be seen. You know, if you ignore this. It'll be a required one, a required one, and a required one. And if you do use that infinite number of zeros, there will be a one at the end of those, you know, zero ones, and then a required one and a required one. So there's two, three required. There's not that in C, nor is there in D. And then finally, you can look at E. And if you take out all of the asterisks, the optional things, just become zero, one, 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 zero, matches E, and that means that B and E will work. Here we have list all the following FSAs representing one star, zero, one star, zero. A is gonna work, you know, it's very simple. One star, then zero, then a one star, then a zero. B is going to fail because the one is only able to be repeated once and you need that option twice here. C, there is a mandatory one and that's not found here. So that's simply off the list. And then D also fails because at the end it allows unlimited zeros. So that's just simply does not match this required one. Next up, we've got which, if any, of the following regular expressions are equivalent to each other. So is A equal to B, C, D, or E? Is B equal to C, D, or E? 
E along those lines. So we can cross out B because it requires an A at the end, whereas here you could end with a B star. Here there's some expression that ends with a B star, same here. And then this is a whole different case that's also not going to be equivalent to anything because you could put in a zero on null string and it would still work. It's just any number of A's, any number of B's, or none. So now we're going to be comparing A, C, and D, and C and D are going to be distinctly different from each other because, as you can see in this third potential thing that's a union, it's going to be one allows any number of Bs and the other only allows one or requires it. So now the possibilities are A and D or A and C. To do that, we should break down A. So the possibilities I just listed out here, so either it can start with an A and then be a b star and then end with a b star but since there's two b stars in a row and that means zero or any number you can simplify to a a b star so that matches both here then there is a a b star and then a so that matches here but not here so this would require one whereas this can be any number so the other ones are going to be equivalent but not that little clause so that means that you've got a and d matching each other here we have which of the following strings are accepted by the following regular expression so the first thing is that a will not match because if you look at the end um, there's well actually it's a bit different so you can start with an a b that works and then you can ignore this b star ignore this by putting in a zero have this a match but then you've got bb a a b required to be filled by this and that will not work b is a similar situation where you have this a works this b works this a works you know if you ignore this um, but then you've got b a required to be filled by this b star a star it shouldn't be a b a that's an error um, but that you can't do that because you can only have one type of letter in one of these b star union a star c is going to lead with an a a and here you need an a b starting so that simply is crossed off the list d actually does work and i'll explain why so the a and the b match up then there's any number of b's so b b b will satisfy this and you can almost ignore this parentheses with zero now you have a b needing to be required by a or fulfilled by a and then b star you need a star and you can do that by saying a is equal to a b is equal to b and we're all good and then e will not work uh, a similar situation the a b b a a will match up with this start and and this start but then you need b a b b a a fulfilled by this last thing and that doesn't work so we've got a couple of senior questions um you know how can you notate this well, it starts with one zero star one and then you can realize that it ends with zero star zero and you need to look at the diverging union paths but they both start with one they both end with one so you don't need to put that in the union and then you notice that the only difference is the zero star here versus the zero one star on the top so put all together you have a one zero star one one and then it gets you to the union so it's either zero one star union zero star and then you end with another one zero star zero and then lastly we've got which of these expressions are equivalent so the expression will start with an a then go into a large union so that's pretty clear and this is going to go into another union after b a star a and that's reflected in each of these starting ones but it's important to have the parentheses correct on these so here if you notice up top the union will be and with that parentheses a b union b a um, and then end with an a so the top is going to be expressed the top union b a star a and then in the parentheses b a union a b and then a so that's what the top will be and the bottom is going to be a b a star a b and then you need to get the correct notation with the brackets so it's going to be c because it's b a star a union of ba and aba and that'll be in a union with aba star ab so that that simply works so thanks for watching the presentation uh, and you know do some more practice problems if you're gonna be doing this before a test but this is a pretty thorough explanation of a lot of different scenarios so i hope that you enjoyed